Hello everyone, my name is Heather Tisdell Bunn and I am thrilled to welcome you to part two of this webinar series. Um, this one is Dispensing for Food Service and it will focus on how to talk to end users about San Jamar Universal Paper Dispensing in the food service segment. CFS Brands is the parent company of the leading names in food service, healthcare, and sanitary maintenance. Companies including Carlisle Food Service Products, San Jamar, Dynex, Sparta Brush, and others combine under CFS Brands to offer expanded product choice, services, and leadership to the marketplace. I'm so excited to be joined by Deb Ponath, Managing Director of Dispensing and International, who has been with the company for 16 years and is really the queen or boss, if you will, of dispensing, as well as Jake Carter, a product manager who worked for San Jamar previously and came back because he just couldn't stay away. Thank you both for being willing to share your knowledge with us today. Thanks, Heather. Um, welcome, everybody. Here we go again, right? This is phase two, um, kind of trying to close the loop on, on and, and more, I guess, instead of close the loop, I should say focus in on the food service segment and trying to get us to a place where we can help you be more successful. Last week, uh, we gave you an idea of what to do in um, in, in, in calling on end users overall, and today our goal is to um, attempt to get this dialed into your segments, to the people you guys are calling on every day. Um, who is that, right? <laughs> the, the reality is that is these guys. And when I say these guys, I mean, um, let's talk who they are, right? Restaurants, that's the obvious one for you. Uh, quick service, chains, fine dining restaurants, those are the easy ones. But also, there's a lot of food service being done in grocery as well as convenience stores, right? And I think you guys are already calling on the key players here to kind of get you into that. But the key to what we're going to talk about today is really what's important to those customers. And you're going to see here that each of those segments and each of those end user customers have their own hierarchy of, ish, of, of, of uh, I'm going to say, touch points, right? Uh, it, level of importance. Um, I'll start by telling you that our first overriding benefit to the food service segment, which we talked on and we touched on last week, was really cost. Saving cost. That was the beginning of, of, of what was going to be important in driving the discussions here. But then, as we talk to each of the different segments, we have different areas of interest for them. And we, Sanjmar, have different solutions that are going to help solve the issues for each of these customers. And although some of them are similar, right, you'll see hygiene um, across many of these segments as a, as, a, as a benefit to them of going to Sanjmar dispensers. We have different solutions for different segments. And we'll talk more about that going forward, uh, what those look like. Um, I guess part of the, what I wanna share with you is, um, we had created a piece of literature that talked specifically to the food service channel. And really it focused on two of the key issues that kind of cross all of the different segments. It talked to cleanliness and hygiene and image. And of course, obviously saving money. This was the piece that we sent out. And yes, this piece is still available digitally, as you can tell. Um, that you can utilize to kind of begin to, to the, begin the conversation with your customers. But here's the key, right? And, and this is one of the interesting things. When you're talking to, and this is specifically to restaurants, the experience that customers have in the restroom is very reliant on, on, and on their coming back and visiting that business again. And although we're in this weird time, right, one of the things we need to do is reoccur those, those, those experiences for the restaurants. And by doing so, we continue to drive the business. And so what this does really is link the experience in the restroom to the ability and the desire of the consumer to come back. 
Another thing this does is really dive into the cost savings that that customer will experience. And, the, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go forward. But let's for a second talk about hand dryers. Thank you for that uh, great video there that kind of leads us into talking about hand dryers. So last week we talked about this briefly. I showed up some marketing materials that we put together showing kind of why um, hand dryers are bad. I mean, as you know, Sheldon there so kindly pointed out, they do spew bacteria into the air. So where did hand dryers come from, right? These all originated as a green perception. You're not wasting paper, you're not killing trees. Well, as we've come and developed the paper industry, most and a chunk of our hand towels today are coming from recycled papers. And really, I mean, at the end of the day, we can talk about it. You can save the planet, but if the people aren't around, what have we done, right? I mean, it's a little, little kind of facetious there, but we gotta look at it overall as if we're causing people to be sick, again, going back to hygiene, gaining our customers' trust in these restaurants. If we go back to allowing people to generate bacteria in a bathroom, what have we really gained? So a couple other problems that we see beyond the hygiene portion within the restaurants, it takes too long. I mean, we're talking about a 45 second dry time versus 10 to 15 with a paper towel. You, you know, people don't use these things because of the length of time or they're walking out grabbing the, the door handle with still wet hands, again, transferring that bacteria. They're not sanitary. I can't say this enough. We go back to the hygiene. That is a big problem today more than ever. Again, when we look at trying to regain the consumer's trust within a restaurant or within the, these gas stations and showing them that we are dedicated to keeping them safe and healthy while we serve them, we need to show that we're taking the necessary steps to prevent bacteria spread. You're gonna need a towel either way at the end of the day within these facilities when we're talking hand washing stations in the back of house. And also the units are very, very loud, right? We have seen studies uh, come out that have actually proven that these can damage young children's hearing because of the decibel levels that they're at. So. It, from, from a loudness, from a safety standpoint, and from an image, right? I mean, you don't want to have that loud blaring noise coming out of your bathroom every time somebody cracks the door. So a number of reasons there. Now, we talk about hygiene quite a bit, right? San, Sanjamar's safe, smart, and sanitary. But I also want to talk about the money. Now, Heather mentioned I was here before, I left, and I came back. I couldn't stay away. I mean, hand, Towel dispensers are amazing to me. I'm a little bit of a nerd, right? So a little background on me. I'm a, a CPA. Uh, my, back, uh, my last life was in the finance uh, realm and accounting realm. So I really wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the dollars, right? The cost saving, the analysis behind how we can really show people how to save money. So when we're starting that conversation, we really need to get an understanding of where they're at today. We need to confirm what, what paper program are they in? Are they in a universal program or are they in a proprietary program? And we talked about last time how we can kind of identify those, whether it be via the dispenser, via questions that we can ask, you know, did you get your dispensers for free? That's a great one that leads you in down that road. Um, did they bundle them together? How did they come when you kind of went into that contract? The next thing we have to look at is in kind of engaging that customer, that end user on how to separate that paper and dispenser cost. When we're talking to them, they have known most commonly and probably only the story of somebody comes in from a big paper company, they hang a dispenser on the wall, and they give them a paper cost. And it's all bundled together, right? In a nice, neat package with a bow on it. This is what you get. They'll often talk in hand dries per case, which we'll touch on a little bit. They, they do a little bit of smoke and mirrors by bringing it all together, not talking about how many feeders on a roll, it's how many hand dries. They, they don't 
they, they couple it together. So you end up not being able to talk paper and dispenser separately. So we teach, we can teach you guys and that's something that we can come in and help you teach your end user on. So the next thing I want to do is kind of walk through a little bit of a role play here with, with Deb and I again, and we're going to kind of go through how this conversation can look that, that initial starting conversation. If anyone's curious, I do look exactly like this today. I do have pants on even though I'm working from home. So just to be clear, um, so it would start something like this. We're going to, you know, I would come in and say something like, hey, I noticed that you have a proprietary towel system in your restroom. Can I talk to you about how maybe we can save you some money? You know, Deb, I'm really busy right now trying to get this place back and open. Um, I, I know that, but I, I think if you could just hear me out for a minute. I know that you guys have about 350 locations, right? If I could help you save around $400,000 in your first year uh, with a new paper program, is that something worth your time? 400000 Yeah, I think we could uh, spend a few minutes talking about that. That's a lot of money. How, how do you suppose you would do that? Well, if, if you separate the paper and dispenser bids, we can likely get you to a much lower paper cost. What you may not realize is those free dispensers, you're paying for them over and over again in the cost, in your cost of your paper every time you buy paper. Now, now Deb, I went out and I, I bidded my business. I got three bids. I mean, I went out and I got the lowest paper cost out there. I understand that. And, and when you're comparing a paper program to a paper program or a proprietary program, you're obviously not separating the paper and dispenser purchase. The real value, you're comparing one proprietary program to another. The real value is going to be when you can separate the paper and dispenser purchase. But first, I'd need to, your help in understanding how much do you currently pay for your paper program? Do you think you could help me figure that out? Yeah, yeah, I'd have to pull that up, um, and, and, but I can definitely pull that up and get you that information. Okay, if you can do that, I can kind of help you understand, uh, bring in a Sanjamar expert and help you understand a little bit more thoroughly how we can execute this paper savings. In times when restaurants are really struggling, I think it would be helpful to be able to understand that. So let's, when you get a chance, let's schedule our next meeting. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. All right. So a little cheesy again, but you know, it, it helps to see how that conversation really plays out. So now we threw out a number there of $400,000 and that may seem like a really big number and it is, but I'm going to now put on the old CPA hat for you for a minute and the finance hat. And I'm going to break down some numbers. Now there's a lot of numbers here. So just kind of stick with me as I walk through this. So we're talking about 350 stores, right? You figure if it's a, a smaller chain, they got a, a tile dryer in you know, each restroom, men and women, and then a couple of hand drying sinks in back. So we're talking, let's assume four dispensers. And then we're gonna assume that they're open 360 days a year. And then I'm gonna show you now in the next slide how we got to a dollar per day per dispenser, right? Cause that's what you can go to the market with. You can kind of have in your back pocket when somebody says, hey, how much can you save me? You can go to them and say, I can probably save you roughly a dollar a day based on this math that I'm about to go through. So we're comparing proprietary versus universal. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I mentioned that when you're talking proprietary, a lot of the, the big companies are gonna tell, tell them it's hand dries per case. So they're gonna talk in hand dries. So they're not gonna compare how many feet are on the roll or tell them that information necessarily because they like to talk in that kind of, I'm gonna call it smoke and mirrors language. So we've gotta do a little digging and we're gonna to have to figure out how many feet are on the rolls. And this is important because the reason they talk hand dries is this started all back in, you know, really when you go back to the in motion days when that first came out and they were really wanting to talk about how much money they could save and they wanted to spin it as hand dries because they had a 10 inch roll and all these details. So what we've gotta do is 
unspin all that information. And now the beauty of Sanjumar dispensers is we can adjust the paper length on our smart systems. So we can get to a pretty apples to apples comparison with these top of the line proprietary, we'll call them dispensers. So that's, so what we got to do is we got to look at the role and this is where it takes a little bit of digging and that's why the Sanjumar team is here to help through this process. But I'm going to walk through this. So if we figure they're paying about 50 bucks a case on a proprietary system, and we're going to assume about a 30% savings to get them down to 35 bucks a case. Now, if I'm going to use in this math here, we're going to say apples to apples, they're both 800 foot rolls. I can show you in a minute how we can look at it if they're different lengths. But again, just for simplicity here, and we're trying not to put you all to sleep, over the next couple minutes, we're gonna assume 800 foot rolls. So we're gonna save right there, roughly $2.50 per roll. Now, we're, again, let's just talk through here for simplicity. Each dispenser out there is gonna get filled every other day. We have 1,400 dispensers, right? 350 times the four. So you figure they get filled 180 times throughout the year. And then, you do the math, that gets us to that customer It's going through about 42,000 cases. If we're assuming that they're gonna save 15 bucks a case, we're at $550,000 in savings. Now you may be sitting there and go, wait a minute, right? You told me 400. Well, we have to also assume the difference here is, again, decoupling the paper versus dis the dispenser. We just talked about the paper savings, but, the, those proprietary guys, they might hang the dispenser for free, right? Or for a very minimal charge. Well, now we've got to build back the cost of joining the universal revolution. So you look at it and you figure, again, 1,400 dispensers, let's say 70 bucks, you're looking at a $100,000 investment. So up front, potentially, a little spoiler there, we can work on how we roll this out, but up front, you might have roughly a hundred thousand dollar expenditure. However, you still inside that year are going to save four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, these are very realistic numbers, folks. I've been been out in the market. I've talked to some end users, some big guys, some littler guys, and the ones that have converted. It, it, the savings out there does line up to this. So, where do you start? Kind of like that conversation Deb and I had. You know, we, you can take some notes from that previous uh, uh, series one of our webinar where we had that role play or this, pre, this one that we just showed you today. You really got to understand, is it proprietary? When does their agreement come due, right? So you want to start cultivating these sales long before the agreement comes due. If you wait till the agreement's due, most likely they're going to be able to get in there and re-sign a new agreement before we get time to talk through this. Plus logistically, right? We're rolling out a new dispenser. We've got to get inventory in their hands, get them installed. So you want to talk before that agreement comes due. So you got to know that date. You got to know what they pay for the paper and what they pay for the dispensers. And as far as what dispenser, right? Because we're going to have to figure out, do they need a tear and dry, which for a high volume application to get through that, that restroom as quick as possible? Or do they want a smart system where they can tailor it back to try to further have paper savings on top of that 30% per case? You know, we've got to understand that. And you've got to understand, have they quoted paper and dispensers separately? And this is kind of where you get into the sometimes free isn't, right? So when we're looking at quoting, we have a tool to help you do exactly what I did. Because I understand not everybody out there is a CPA or likes to look at spreadsheets and all the Excel numbers that make me really happy. So for those that don't, we've got a really nice tool that'll allow you walk through. So if you start answering these questions, you can understand you know, once you understand the length and the role, right? The number of feet, like I talked about, some proprietary roles are gonna be different. They're gonna be 600 foot. So we gotta understand that. So that way we can do an apples to apples comparison. And we've got this tool here that when you enter the numbers, it does all that back end math for you. So you don't have to crunch your brain around it. So you need to understand, like I said, the length, the role, the number of uh, cases, roles per case, the number of cases they go through, and then 
what kind of dispenser they need, the approximate cost of those dispensers, because again, we have a potential investment cost when you're going into uh, universal. And I keep saying potential because we'll touch on how we can frame that differently potentially here in a minute. And then you need to know the cost of the paper without dispensers. Again, quoting things separately. And this is where we'll help you help them go to those paper companies and understand how to speak in a language where they can separate the paper and the dispenser because that's critical for this conversation. Thanks, Jake. But the one thing I wanted to t everyone to take away from what Jake just said is the ability to understand that if you give these guys, give your customers about a dollar a day per dispenser savings, you are going to be able to roughly um, get them to a point where you can understand roughly what they're going to save. Everything's going to be different. There's all kinds of different um, uh, opportunities to save money uh, if, if a paper company wants a specific um, piece of business they're gonna they're gonna go really low for it but when you want to talk in general terms you guys a dollar a day per dispenser is about the amount of money they can save by going to a universal system so I just kind of wanted you to um, have that as as a as a perspective um, but let's talk about other ways that we can save our customers money. Um, long battery life is one of the ways that we can begin to save our customers money, right? Our dispensers, when you do our electronic dispensers, they get some of the best battery life in the industry. So it's not an additional, big additional cost. Um, and in fact, it can help save money for the customers long term. Another way that Jake had a little bit alluded to was portion control. So when, when paper companies go through and want uh, someone to want, um, want to save you money and kind of do it in a smoke and mirrors way, right? Like, like part of the question is how do they get so much money for that in motion paper? Well, the way they do it is they go, oh, we're going to save you money on hand dries. Um, the reality is we do the same thing in a lot of our dispensers. Um, we allow ourselves to, to portion control the same way that the paper companies do. We allow ourselves to, um, we allow our customers to save money by also doing the same portion controls that paper companies do. Um, the Simplicity Essence, for example, our mechanical hands-free gives customers a 10-inch piece of paper versus the 11-inch, which is a standard in mechanical hands-free, giving 10% more, and if I put them in air quote, hand dries, than competitive electronic dispensers. Um, Smart System also does the same paper length uh, variations that in motion does. So we get the same paper uh, savings that you would do in other, um, in other dispensing. So we offer the same things in universal that the proprietary guys are offering in proprietary dispensing. Um, high end quality, right? You get to put a dispenser up and it stays up. And one SKM of paper, another thing that's really important in the food service channel, interesting, you can have one SKU of paper and get multiple dispensing options. So if you want a higher end electronic dispenser in your restroom, you can offer that. If you want a mechanical hand free, maybe at your hand sink or a hybrid uh, at your hand sink so you never run out of paper, you can offer that there as well. So there's a lot of different ways that we can add value to our customers than, than just simply giving them a, a, a better paper, a less expensive paper program. The other piece here, many cost options, right? So we have electronic dispensers that are everything from a Summit dispenser all the way down to a, 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 a uh, I'm sorry, all the way from a um, smart dispenser all the way down to a tear and dry essence, giving many different value options for that paper as well. <laughs> so, um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about which dispensers for which app, which application um, are meeting the, the, the needs. What, what are the benefits to some of Sanjamar's dispensers as far as addressing some of the needs of the end users? So we'll start with, you know, some of the things 
that are important, right? Improved hygiene. So first and foremost, the answer our dispensers in this world of COVID uh, are an improved hygienic way to dispense paper. I'll give you guys an example. Um, we've had school systems who at the beginning of last year had purchased tear and dry dispensers with the towel out and now have repurchased smart systems because they didn't want any towel exposed. Now we can talk about towel exposure and the um, and, and, and COVID, right? How, how concerning it is for some people to have any towel exposed. Um, but, but one thing you need to understand is improved hygiene, right? That's, that's what we're, one of the stories we have for all of our end users. Universal appeal, Jake's kill, uh, killed that one, right? Savings on paper. Um, enhanced image, uh, a lot of universal options in dispensers, either coming from paper companies, right? Or uh, universal options coming from other universal suppliers don't have the same image options that the Sandbar dispenser has. So as we talk to colleges and universities and we begin to talk about universal paper savings and they say, oh, but I could get a universal dispenser from a paper company, oftentimes they, the dispensers that are being offered by paper companies don't have the same image options as what we're offering. So, and then as Jake mentioned, high quality performance, right? The battery life, the, the things that we've done for quality to make sure that our dispensers um, meet the needs of the customer. Some of you guys have seen this, some of you probably have not, but this is the hierarchy of touch of, of Sanjamar roll towel dispensers. Why do we spend all our time talking about roll towel? As you guys know, that's where the money is, right? I have to follow the money and the paper savings comes in the form typically of roll towel. So here we have a hierarchy and the key here is understand how sensitive the end user is to cost of dispensers, and then we can understand what options we have for them. So, you know, I've, I've been a part of people who want to have a smart system at a low price, and then I say, hold on a second, if we need, if, if cost is a primary driving factor, we probably should not be offering the summit look, the black and stainless look. We probably should not be offering our smart system. We maybe should be offering a smart essence and a classic look as we try to get to more sensitivity and pricing. So my point here is just to say that we have an we have options in pricing, we have options in features, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where some of these dispensers play and uh, at what end users and why. So let's start at the top of the pyramid, right? Smart system. You guys will notice for all you guys who are um, super, super users, right, that I have all three families available, the Summit, the Classic, let me try that again. The Summit, Summit, the Classic, and the Oceans family available in our smart system. Why? Because there's people who are concerned about image. There are, there are things that this dispenser offers that other dispensers don't. That's why it's at the top of the pyramid. It, has, it eliminates stub roll waste. So when we're talking about people who want to reduce maintenance, we're going we're gonna to talk about things and, you know, I'll, t I'll tell you this probably would not. Um, it, it does have applications at airports, but Class A office buildings, schools and universities, that's where you're really going to, and, and I say universities more so than, than, than elementary schools, um, but that's where you're going to find the best applications for the smart system, right? Um, why Class A office? They're looking at image, right? This dispenser offers all of the functionality of the in motion dispenser. Um, so if you've got people who already have an in motion, they like the functionality, they want to set paper lanes, paper delay, stub roll, all of that's available in this dispenser. But again, why does Class A office want it? Because it's an image thing. Why would airports want it? Because you could have towel in if that's important to you, but you can also set these to have towel out, which makes them much quicker. Um, and again, universities are going to be interested in this primarily for image, right? When they're trying to get kids to choose their college, all things, all things come back to image. I'm going to talk to you next about hybrid. Now, if you'll notice, this isn't at the top of our pyramid. This is in the second, uh, second level down. This is available in our summit line because if we're going to say that summit is, in, and I would contend that summit is our highest end look, 
line, we're going to make our dispenser that has a lot of features in it um, the, the available in that line. But I do want to talk to you about why I wouldn't put hybrid at the top of our pyramid as far as offering features, right? The hybrid, okay, let me just talk to you quickly about what it does have, right? It has a push bar at the bottom of the dispenser, um, which allows it, when the batteries run out, it allows it to be used as a lever dispenser. So you never don't have access to towel, which is very important, right? The one downside always has been to our electronic dispensers, well, what do I do if the batteries run out? I can't have paper. This solves that problem. However, there's a reason that this is not at the top of our, 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 our pyramid of, of dispensers. And the reason for that is it's missing two things that the smart system has. It's missing a replaceable chassis, first and foremost, right? So you'll notice on here, you aren't going to see airports primarily. Why? Because an airport typically has more than one dispenser in a bathroom. So if there's a time when the batteries run out of one dispenser, you typically would go then to the other dispensers in the bathroom, right? But you will find it in Class A office. Why? Because typically you're going to be in, in there may only be one dispenser per restroom per floor. Um, and if that's the case, you certainly don't want it to run out of um run out of batteries. But the reason this doesn't reside at the top is it does not have a stub roll feature and it does not have a replaceable chassis. Another reason you probably wouldn't want it in an airport where they go through super high volumes of product. So a little bit about why our hybrid is best for class A office and university. Again, you get the image. As you get into smaller restrooms, you always have access to paper when there's only one dispenser hung. Something to keep in mind. So let's talk about tear and dry. As all of you who know me well know, it's my favorite dispenser. I must say, even in COVID times, I would love that. <laughs> I love this dispenser. Why? It's perfect for places like stadiums and airports where you need to get people out fast. The other thing I'll say about a tear and dry dispenser versus a, summit, uh, a, a sensor type dispenser is because paper is always available, it makes maintaining the restroom easier and cleaner. Um, our sensor dispenser and anyone else's, your hands are dripping on the floor while you're waiting for that sensor to activate. A tear and dry dispenser does not have that issue. Um, and for that reason, when you're trying in a stadium, and you know this is one of uh, my favorite uh, comments, when you're trying to get people into a hot dog line where you're going to make money and out of a bathroom where you don't make money, you're going to want a tear and dry system dispenser for that application. Um, high capacity, has the replaceable chassis, so it's perfect for airports uh, where you're going to go through super high volumes. And we've had applications, we have customers, uh, airport customers who simply replace the chassis uh, when, the, when, the, um, when the chassis reaches its life. So a little bit about that. As we, move down the, as we move down the pyramid, we have Smart Essence, and we have Tear and Dry Essence. You know, this, again, is where we're looking at, and if you'll notice, um, these are not available in our Summit line, our highest and most expensive lines. Why? Because these are really price fighter products. Um, they have a lot of the functionality of a, of a smart system uh, without the replaceable drive module and without the, um, without the stub roll features. Again, making them better in a smaller footprint and more of an economical choice uh, as far as the dispensers go. Smart Essence is our mechanical hands-free dispenser. Um, you guys, this saves customers money, right? So this is the lowest cost dispenser you're going to find for hardwound roll towel that's touchless, right? We'll talk a little bit about lever, but as we're moving down the pyramid, you still have a touch-free um, experience for your customers, meaning the paper is hanging out, um, and they don't have to touch the dispenser for the paper. As you know, when the paper doesn't hang out, you, there is an option on the side where you can, oops, sorry, did not mean to do that, where you can touch the, um, you do have to touch the dispenser, but you will always have access to paper. Again, one of the advantages for customers who will not consider 
batteries. And I will tell you, I've had airport locations, which I would not necessarily recommend this for an airport, but I'll tell you, you'll see it in an airport all the time. I see mechanical hands-free dispensers all the time in the Milwaukee airport when I, when I fly through Milwaukee and the last time I could fly, you know, three months ago. But, but, but the key to that is over time, these dispensers, the, 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 um, and it's not just the, mine, it's everybody's. The, the way that a mechanical hands-free dispenser works is it requires tension between rollers. And as we've talked about a million times, you guys have heard this, rollers are made of rubber and paper is made of wood. And over time, my dispenser and every other mechanical hands-free dispenser on the market what that rubber wears, and as it wears, there's not enough tension between the rollers to kick out that next sheet. That is why you ultimately, at the end of the life of a mechanical hands-free dispenser, have to touch the dispenser more often. Now, I have had airports who tell me they will not deal with batteries. And a lot of times, just so you're clear, the reason they've come to that conclusion is they've been burned by other electronic dispensers that don't give them good battery life. So, you know, I would encourage you to take those opp the opportunity um, where people are pushing you to mechanical hands-free dispensers and you know it's probably not the right choice for them to give an electronic dispenser, one of our electronic dispensers, an opportunity to show them what battery life can really be. Um, some applications for this where this is good, low, low volume office buildings, right, uh, where you have somebody replacing a roller to every week. Um, these dispensers will give you great life. You know, if, if we're replacing a roller to a week, um, you know, these dispensers will give you 200 rolls. We're talking years of great use out of this dispenser before it gets to a point where you have to touch the side. Um, also in colleges and universities, when they won't go to batteries, um, this is a great opportunity. So just to give you some perspective. And as I get to the bottom of the, of the um, pyramid, I, wanna under, I want you to understand that at the end of the day, lever dispensers, Sandmar is one of the only companies that continues to invest in lever when we came out with our T950 about five years ago, four or five years ago. Um, Here's the thing with lever, guys. It is the lowest cost way to dispense the lowest cost paper. Now, you do have to touch a lever to get it. We've done some things on the lever on our T950 to make them uh, ergonomically better for like the side of your hand versus your fingers having to touch the lever. And as you guys know, we have the Integra, which is designed to be used with your forearm. So you don't have hopefully, a wet hand touching this, and instead you can use your forearm. Trying to give you a little bit more of a hygienic option than a standard lever, um, and all of our levers do have BioClean in them, which is an uh, antibacterial, uh, it's a microbial antibacterial growth. So it does not kill bacteria on contact. So unfortunately, when the coronavirus hits this, the lever, it does not kill that virus, but it does inhibit bacterial growth uh, on the dispenser. So a little bit about our, our um, lever dispensers that offer you opportunities. And then I'm just going to tell you we do have other options, right? We have our new center pull dispenser, and if you haven't seen it, um, it is a, a patented new dispensing option for center pull, which, as you can see on the bottom here, has um, opportunities for different ply papers so that you can choose an aperture at the bottom to, to pull your paper through to give you, oops, sorry, to give you, ah, I'm so skipping ahead, my bad, um, to give you an opportunity to set the aperture to give you better tearing of the center pull paper. Um, it can be turned over as a gym wipe dispenser, right? So for wet wipes as well. Um, and this is a new dispenser that we just launched within the last, this year. We also have opportunities in folded towel. If you guys didn't know the first touchless dispensing, if you're wondering why uh, there's still folded towel a lot in medical, this was the first touchless dispensing that came out for towel, right? Was folded towel. So we've done some things now to make it um, better for countertops. So one of the, <clears throat> again, a coronavirus, uh, a cor coronavirus solution for the people who have baskets out with towels completely exposed, our, our countertop towel dispenser uh, offers the opportunity to conceal most of the towel and only leave a little bit out uh, for, for someone to grab. So 
as you're looking for hygienic solutions, um, you know, in, in folded towel and in center pull towel, we have those as well. Um, you know, again, I would tell you that class A office, a lot of times you would find this countertop towel as a great solution, lower volume applications where they're still using folded towel. Sandmar gives you better solutions for folded towel than anyone else. So now I want to spend a few minutes talking to you guys specifically about different end users that you, segments that you guys are probably talking to and how some of their hot buttons are addressed with dispensers, with Sandmark dispensers. So the first one we'll talk about is quick service chains, right? And how important hygiene is in quick service chains. Um, Touchless dispensing is always going to give you the best hygiene, right? And we have a lot of touchless dispensing options. There's touchless dispensing in roll towel, in folded towel, center pull. There's a lot of touchless dispensing options, all of which Sandmar offers, many of which at varying price points. The other piece to this is antimicrobial, right? So as we look at um, hygiene, Sandmar puts antimicrobial um, additives into the plastic on things that customers will touch. So on lever handles, on the doors to tissue dispensers, all of those things, again, adding to the hygiene story. Maintenance, easy maintenance. In a quick service restaurant, as we all know, it's, it's really important that we make it easy to maintain. We've got a 16-year-old kid changing paper towel or, or tissue in the middle or right before a lunch rush. So we need to make it easy to load. We have stub roll features to eliminate mess on the countertops. Um, you know, we've done things in our folded towel dispensers to eliminate little snibbles of paper on the floor because, because of the design of our inherent design, which we've patented, of our folded towel dispensers. You know, we've given our dispensers transparent covers so they're easy to see when you're running out of paper. We do a lot of these things that will make our dispensers a value add to your customers so they can save money on paper and eliminate any um, concerns and address some of the needs they have to run their business more efficiently. I'll talk about being fast, right? Our tear and try towel dispensers offer um, paper out options so you can have a hygienic touchless dispensing uh, experience, but yet keep people running through that restroom uh, to get them back to order uh, more food at the, <laughs> at the uh, counter. And image, right? Image is always important. We talked about that a little bit earlier in that cell sheet I showed you. Um, and how important restroom image is to getting people to come back to your establishment. Um, keeping the restroom clean is part of that. Uh, coordinating families is a part of that. So, you know, these are some issues that uh, quick service chains have. But let's talk a little bit about, uh, more about different types of, of issues. And let's, you know, as we move down the chain, the level of importance of different pieces of this change a little bit, right? So casual theme, we still have hygiene, right? We still have um, the opportunity and the desire for a clean, uh, hygienic restroom. Maintenance is still important, right? The low maintenance. But the image may take a little bit of a turn here, right? Because in casual themes, oftentimes you'll have visible uh, kitchens. And when you have visible kitchens, your hand sinks are visible and your dispensers are visible. Um, sometimes you'll have countertop, uh, um, the folded towels on the rest, in the restrooms, on the counters. That takes a different uh, solution set, but again, things that Sandmark can offer. Um, you know, keeping the restroom clean. We talked a little bit about how folded towel can help if you put it in a folded towel dispenser that's patented. You can also have that in the restroom. We've created things like try round mandrels so that you don't have, um, if you can dispense less expensive single ply tissue much easier without having all the little pieces on the restroom floors. So again, Similar needs for this customer base, but, but yet a little bit tweaked. And this is where Sandmar can help you um, have the conversation for what's most important to those customers. Find One thing I'd also mention is that in, ch in restaurant chains and in casual theme, if you're talking larger 
chains, even casual theme, you know, you're going to be talking to different people. You might be talking to the operations manager. You might be talking to the food safety manager. Um, as you get to smaller restaurants, right, you're going to be talking to the owners. When you get into fine dining, you're going to probably be talking to the chef as they make most of the decisions. But again, we have different needs. Yes, they still want hygiene. Yes, they still want, um, you know, but they're really about customer experience and fine dining. So as we move to that, um, you know, how do Sandmar dispensers give you a better customer experience? Primarily, I'll tell you, it's our image, right? Our, our countertop folded towel you see here, a stainless look. Um, you know, our dispensers are quiet so that even in the restrooms, you don't not only have loud air dryers, but you also have quieter electronic dispensers. So there's a lot of things that we do to help in fine dining as well. Now we'll talk a little bit um, about grocery. Um, again, you're going to have hygiene. A lot of what we've seen in the change in grocery, right, is actual meal service or um, meal availability at grocery stores, right? There are some grocery today that have small restaurants in them and that are doing food preparation in the back. Um, you know, as you talk to grocery, if you're talking to a grocery chain, you're probably again talking to operations people. Um, where touchless dispensing is going to be an issue. Uh, easy to load uh, is going to be an issue. Um, you know, the, the, the whole service of those dispensers. And I'm going to say a lot of your grocery chains, either if it's at the hand sink in the delis or at the hand sink uh, in their fruit food prep areas, um, they're exposed. I don't know if you guys have, have noticed, but um, I, and maybe I'm just hyper aware, but I can tell you exactly what brand of dispensers and the image of the dispensers in our grocery stores. Um, so again, a different set of customers people you are probably talking to today um, that instead of just talking food pans, we should be introducing the conversation of dispensers. And hopefully that cheesy, dumb role play that Jake and I have done now a couple of times helps you understand how at least you can start the conversation. Um, and even if you don't feel like you're an experience, you know, you have enough information yet, it's okay. Like we can help you figure that out um, and you can bring in other people to have that conversation with you. Um, so, Let's talk a little bit now about convenience stores. So oftentimes these are um, going to be attached to gas stations, right? I mean, that's where we're going to find our convenience stores. They, again, have different needs. Um, and again, I'm going to tell you one of the benefits to a universal system is you can have a number of different types of dispensers within one organization, all, ser all serving <laughs> one SKU of paper, right? So out at the pumps, we can have a lever dispenser. Um, in fact, you probably have noticed, uh, well, if, if you've looked, um, at a lot of gas station pumps, you have lever dispensers now with towel. You have um, our Integra's pretty great uh, out in outdoors in the elements. So we have some touch dispensers that are really good at an, in the outside of gas stations. But then as you go inside the convenience stores, again, they're prepping food. They're making pre-made sandwiches. They're doing a lot of, of, of food, even exposed food preparation in the in the convenience store itself. We see a lot of the same issues here, right? Easy to load because you have a lot of younger, uh, less experienced people. And again, this is one of the advantages that Sanjmar has. I'm going to just tell you, we service every kind of segment. We service end users. and We're talking to them all the time. So we understand some of the the issues when you try to overcomplicate how to load a dispenser or how to utilize a stub roll feature. We can help make, we've helped to make those easier um, videos to show how it's done, that kind of thing. So easy maintenance needs to be low touch service. The, it, the part of the convenience store story though is how we keep your restroom cleaner between servicing, right? It's a lot of the, hey, we have stub roll features so that you can utilize the entire roll. You don't have to put a roll of towel out on a countertop. 
that also, guys, just going back to our image, that's also very important when we're talking to quick service chains and, and mom and pop restaurants, right? We have ways to 100% utilize all of the paper without putting a, a, a stub roll of tissue on the back of a toilet or a, a stub roll of towel out on the counter, which isn't hygienic and which in some instances, if you don't have a stub roll feature, is the only way you can get 100% utilization of your paper. So we do these things in our dispensers to help address the issues of the customers. My point to you today isn't to say, I'm going to tell you exactly which dispenser. It's only to say we understand a lot of the, the issues that are faced by our end user customers. We've created dispensers to help mitigate some of those issues and we can help fix them. So I, I hope today in this you know, 40 minute presentation we've done for you, there's a, just a couple of takeaways. One is, a dollar a dispenser per day is about what you can tell someone they will save when you want to have a conversation um, about dispensing. It can and probably is more than that, but we can pretty much, and I say with a little bit of a wink, guarantee that they will save at least a dollar a day per dispenser. As you can imagine, as that as the number of dispensers an organization has grows, their savings grows. That's not a surprise, right? The throughput of their paper grows as well. So we have a lot more money saving. So um, I want you to take away a dollar a day per dispenser. I want you to take away that we understand the needs of your customers, regardless of where they fall within the food service world, right? Regardless of if it's a large national chain, if it's a small local chain, um, if it's a grocer, if it's a convenience store, these are people you're talking to already. Have the hand sinks. Um, we can help you, you know, you can, Start the conversation by who in your organization is responsible for purchasing paper. That's the conversation you want to start to have. And then take that to the next level. Hey, how can we talk to you about hand hygiene? How, you know, is that your food safety director? Hey, let's talk to that person as well and start to bring the right people to the table. <laughs>